Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, PhD Life. I'm Elena Reister and I got my PhD in chemistry and now I make these videos to help other people navigate the PhD life. So now that I have my coffee, let's sit down and talk about how you should optimize your graduate school schedule around your natural sleep patterns. We've all heard the difference between being an early bird and being a night owl. And since I'm a researcher, I wanted to do more research on what those terms really meant and how we should schedule our life if we are one or the other. So I first looked into how to become a morning person or how to become a night owl. And when I search these things, you can see that when you search how to become a morning person, you can get tons and tons of articles that come up telling you how to become more of a morning person or how to trick yourself into becoming a morning person. On the other hand, when you search how to become a night owl, there are almost no articles actually telling you how to go from being a morning person into being a night owl. Instead, you get a lot of articles telling you how to become a more high functioning night owl or to be productive as a night owl because apparently being a night owl is a problem naturally to productivity. So then when I did research looking at what kind of traits were associated with being an early bird or a night owl, I wasn't all that surprised to see you know where the positive and negative traits fell so according to research early birds tend to sleep better have more regular sleep patterns have more flexible personalities they feel happier and they tend to procrastinate less on the other hand night owls tend to have higher rates of depression, have higher dependencies on alcohol and caffeine, and tend to stress more. So this isn't really surprising that the morning people get all pretty much the good traits, and then the night owls tend to have negative traits. And I don't think this is necessarily because of what time they sleep, but it might just be because society is constantly telling us that sleeping later into the day and staying up at night is not the correct way to sleep. So I did find a couple articles that were able to show that night owls did have some positive characteristics where they're able to focus longer during the day and they actually end up having higher salaries than early birds despite the societal notion that being a night owl is adolescent or not you know mature enough or the right way to sleep more recent research shows that genetics actually plays a role in the regulation of your circadian rhythm so when you sleep versus when you're awake and when you feel the most alert and one study i found actually said that there are four different types of sleep chronotypes so patterns of sleeping so the first ones are lions and these are your early risers that make up about 15 percent of the population in the middle are bears and they make up about 50 to 55 percent of the population and our society is actually structured around the bears typical sleep schedule where they tend to have like the nine to five alertness and tend to go to sleep a little bit earlier and wake up in time to start their eight to nine o'clock job. The night owls are known as wolves and they make up about 15% of the population. And these are people who go to sleep generally after 11 p.m. And if they didn't have anything to wake them up earlier, they would generally wake up after 8.30 a.m. And then finally, you have the dolphins, and these are also thought to make up about 10 to 15% of the population. 
and they are a little different because these are um actual people who have insomnia um so they've been diagnosed or they could be diagnosed with insomnia causing sleep disturbances that don't allow them to maintain normal sleep patterns. So this article is linked below if you wanna look more into it. And this article also has a quiz in it that helps you determine your um, sleep chronotype. And so I took this quiz to try and figure out what they thought was the best chronotype for me, even though I was pretty sure I knew what mine was already. So the quiz that I took basically had me fill out a bunch of questions about my personality, when I slept, when I was most alert, how I would rather do stuff, whether I'd rather do it in the morning or the evening. Afterwards, I found out that I was the wolf chronotype, which means I am a night owl, which I already knew, but it was interesting to be able to get their perspectives and then be able to apply this into my own life. If your sleep patterns are determined by your genetics, then constantly trying to change them to become what society thinks of as the better or more mature sleep pattern is not actually going to help you and actually may harm your productivity. So I wanna go through what is the optimum schedule for the different chronotypes. And I'm gonna focus on the lion, the bear, and the wolf because I am not qualified to tell insomniacs how to run their day. So you can see that we have um, three different clocks, essentially 24 hour clocks. And they're, the first thing you wanna put into these clocks is the time that you're sleeping. And so then after that, you can rearrange what everything else you have to do in a day around when you're best sleeping. So after the sleep, we're gonna put in schoolwork because that's the next highest priority. And for your schoolwork, there's generally always some time that you have to be at school. So either you have meetings or classes that start early in the day. Usually these don't start before 8 a.m. In my experience, these meetings and classes tend to be in the nine to five time frame. Um, but this kind of varies depending on who your advisor is and what school you're at and when they like to do things. So I'm gonna kind of put in the timing of things around kind of a nine to three time frame of when you most likely would have to be at school either for going to classes or other types of meetings. And so if you're someone who naturally wakes up earlier, you may wanna start your day earlier where you're getting off closer to that three to four time frame versus if you're someone who sleeps in later, you probably want to move to start your day closer to when your meetings would first start, so around the 9 to 10 a.m., and then work later into the day on research and other things that are not scheduled into your day. So next is your me time, and I talked about this in my previous video that I'll have linked here, and it just is basically all of the time that you need to focus on things outside of uh, school and sleeping. So in your me time, I'm including a little bit of the me time between sleeping and school. And this is your time to get ready to eat breakfast and to do the other things you need to do before going to school. But the bulk of your me time is going to be between school and sleeping. And this is time for you to relax, for you to do other non-school things, socializing and things like that. Something that might be important for people who are morning people is that they find that if you move your workouts from the morning to the afternoon, that can tend to give you more energy to make it through the night if you wanna do things like socializing rather than working out in the morning and then getting tired in the early afternoon and not being able to have as much of a social life as you'd like to. One of the last things that is important for the optimization of your schedule based on your sleep patterns is creativity times. So studies have found that you are most creative in your kind of off time. So for night owls, you're most creative in the morning and for early birds, you're most creative in the evening. 
And so this can be important because in graduate school, there's always some creative activities you have to do, whether that's coming up with new research ideas or coming up with grant ideas, or if you're stuck on a problem and need to find a creative solution to getting at it. So you may want to, for Night Owl's plan, when you first get into work, maybe that's the time that you work on those problems or for early birds doing it right before you get off for the day. And that may be a better time to optimize when you're being most creative. So as I said before, I got the wolf chronotype. I'm naturally a night owl. And for a lot of my time in graduate school, I tried to alter my sleep patterns into becoming a morning person. And this would mean that I would try and go to bed really early, but in reality, I was spending probably four hours just laying in bed, being unable to sleep. And then I would get really upset at myself when I wasn't able to wake up as early as I wanted to because I would naturally get up between 8 and 10 a.m. And I would try and get up at like 5 or 6 a.m. so that I could get to work and be productive. So I found that when I sleep more according to my sleep chronotype, I go to sleep later and wake up later and don't try to force myself to go to sleep earlier and just waste all of that time, I'm able to actually get a lot more done. I'm able to be more productive because instead of wasting four hours trying to make myself fall asleep, I'm actually getting work done. And then throughout the day, I'm alert enough and able to focus enough that I can also get my work done instead of trying to fit what society told me was the right way to go about doing work and being productive. So I really hope that this video kind of gave you some new insights into how to optimize your schedule around your sleep pattern instead of changing your sleep pattern for your schedule. If you liked this content, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel down below. I post videos every Thursday at noon all about having a PhD and what life is like both before you get there, during grad school, and then after you have your PhD. See you next week.